Hi everybody and welcome back to the Paperless Movement YouTube channel. I'm Tom Solid and I'm wearing this t-shirt today to tell you that this is the new hashtag on Twitter and on Instagram. I used hashtag Paperless Movement before, but it was just too long for Twitter. So that's why I switched to this easily to pronounce and remember hashtag here. Paperless Movement. PPLMVM and that's the way how you will find the post about Paperless Movement. Now that's out of the way. Let's dive into the review of the Magic Keyboard for Apple. Let's do this. Let me just get the box right now. Ah, there we are. And now, let's open it. After this video, you will know if it is worth for you to buy the Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro or if it is not. So let's dive into it. And the first thing I want to look at is weight. I gained some weight since the home office time. What about you? Let me know in the comments below. But talking about weight on the Magic Keyboard, it is actually insane. Okay, so the iPad Pro or the iPad in general is a device to be mobile and people using laptops or MacBooks are already mobile. Those are mobile devices. The iPad and the iPad Pro in general is a, such a really lightweighted tablet that many people prefer using this instead carrying around a laptop. When you apply the Magic Keyboard to the iPad Pro 12 inch, the one I have actually, then you will get a total weight of 1,333 grams without the Apple Pencil. Just put this into comparison. If you compare this with the Apple Keyboard Folio, so the previous keyboard you could buy for the iPad Pro, it is around 300 grams more than before. And when I have my beloved Tsugo case on my iPad Pro 12 inch, it is just 1,114 grams. Of course, those two can't be compared because there's no trackpad on there. However, if you compare it with the MacBook Air, the newest model, you still have more than 100 grams more weight using the iPad Pro 12 inch with the Magic Keyboard compared to the MacBook Air 13 inch. Now you could say, ah, oh, you wanna tell me that I should use a MacBook Air now instead of an iPad Pro, that's stupid, look at the performance. Yeah, if you look at performance, obviously the iPad Pro is really fast compared to MacBook Air, for example. However, if you look for the MacBook Pro 13 inch, it also just weighs 1360 grams. So you will have a high performance laptop there, which weighs exactly the same as you would use the iPad Pro 12 inch in the Magic Keyboard. Just think about it. And then with all the flaws, you know, the apps you can't use on the iPad and so on. I know many already saying, oh, I'm giving this guy a thumbs down. He compares iPad Pro with MacBook Pro. It's completely different things. And that's exactly what we get now. The next point, it's using the Apple Pencil. For my case, I bought the iPad Pro due to the Apple Pencil. It is really natural feeling now writing on the iPad Pro, especially if you apply a matte screen protector like the paper like, so you get a really nice handwriting feeling. And to me, the iPad Pro is the perfect device for drawing and writing using the Apple Pencil. With iOS 14, there's the new Pencil Kit coming out as well, which will allow you to directly write into text fields using an Apple Pencil. So I think this will be a game changer. And it's really interesting that Apple published the Magic Keyboard before the release of the iOS 14. In my case, I won't need a keyboard any longer on the iPad Pro when I will be able to write directly into text fields. There have been already solutions out there like handwriting keyboards and so on. I showed you this in previous videos. However, I'm sure Apple will nail this when they implement their own engine for handwriting into text fields. So talking about the Apple Pencil, and that is my opinion, the, the main reason to get an iPad, why didn't they think about the Apple Pencil? I mean, look at this. I could, you know, I could complain about that it is still on top and there's no secure, like if you have, like you have on the Subo case, it is secured here, it can't slip off and so on. And it's really still a nice form factor. So why isn't this possible? Okay, Apple just want to allow you to easily take out the iPad and then write like this. But I actually never do it like this. 
I always want to have a certain angle to write on. So people say, oh, if you have paper, you don't have this either. Yes, but I would prefer if I would have a slight angle to write on wherever I am. And with the Suku case, that's the case. So in here, still again, it is not possible. I mean, you can write on this, but it's really uncomfortable. So I would have preferred if they have an option, you know, for example, to get it further down like this, and you can write, write like this, and then you can just put it up there. That would be a magic keyboard implemented the Apple Pencil, in my opinion. So talking about the Apple Pencil and protection again, obviously also you have a very heavy weighted iPad Pro now. It is not as good protected as it would be, for example, again in the Sugo case. Every edge is covered and um, this is not the case here. But that's a personal thing. Uh, many say, oh, I don't need this. You, you know, you take care of your iPad Pro and so on. And I totally understand that people are happy now that they have a keyboard and a trackpad. But talking about the trackpad, I watched a lot of different reviews already about the Magic Keyboard. And the thing I'm wondering that even when they mention that it is very narrow, the trackpad, that it is still okay. In my case, it's not okay. I think the vertical space is not enough to properly scroll through documents, for example, or, you know, to scroll and do things like this. And it's interesting, if you compare this to the trackpads on the MacBook, it is the same width as for the old MacBook Air. Even there, of course, the vertical length is more. For the new MacBook Air, we have already a much wider trackpad and I don't get even started with the MacBook Pro, which is huge compared to the iPad Pro. And in my opinion, I use this all the time, this space of a trackpad. The functionality behind a trackpad is awesome, no doubt. It's the best you can get if you want to have a trackpad on your case using the iPad. I showed you a video about this external keyboard here, so you have an alternative. Um, you have a keyboard and a little trackpad here. It is so far away, the functionality and the feeling and everything compared to the original Magic Keyboard, obviously. There is another alternative, the Bridge Pro Plus, which I will also review and make a comparison of this. If you're interested to find out more about this, make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I'm really looking forward if they can keep up with the trackpad. I think it will be really hard to get this feeling and functionality that you have on this trackpad. Also, it is clickable. Okay, so you don't have this on this external device here. So, and also all the gestures are working. That's really great. But as I said, to me, the vertical space is not enough. In addition, the functionality of the mouse on the iPad is there yet. And they really, you know, they're getting there. I'm sure about this. And what now needs to happen is that all the apps start to adapt to the new functionality that they have a mouse. Of course, that's another way you can interact with the app now and developers have to go into there and, and, and redesign the things as well. It is very smooth and it is really, you know, catching these icons and things like that. It's really nice. And you can even play games now with the uh, mouse and I was really interested especially in strategy games I can really see using the trackpad more often or a mouse in general on iPad and there are all a, a lot of other games um, that you can play with the trackpad and I really like this implementation especially because it's clickable it is much easier to play these games because you can press and hold if you have to do this and then move around and that's not possible on other trackpads without the click so I think this click on the trackpad is actually really important. What I'm wondering on the keyboard though is that you still don't have functions, a function key row. The iPad OS actually supports all these function keys as we have seen on other keyboard cases where you have the function keys there. So they still don't get these function keys. Maybe they just want to save space again. But this also means that I still have to reach out to my iPad. If I don't like things doing on my iPad, then it is reaching, reaching out and touching tiny things that I need to do and things like this. Again, it's a personal thing. However, I would love to do everything with the mouse and the keyboard. The keyboard feel itself, it's really nice. 
Yeah, it's a really nice feeling when you're writing on this keyboard. I already liked the Apple Keyboard Folio before. Many complained about the feeling of this, but I, I, I still liked it. I like the improvement. I also feel the difference. That's really nice implementation. That's really great. Just wondering about the arrow keys, why they still make it so small, but um, but maybe that's a design choice. So to me, it's really the issue with the angle and the handwriting. In my opinion, if I would be a professional artist, I'm not sure if I would really like this. Obviously, it is designed that you can just easily take this off and start drawing. And if you have a drawing board, you can just take it off and put it on your drawing board and draw there. I get this and that might be a really nice solution to you. And this is your, you know, your station where you do all the work. That might be a really good workflow you can do. But to me again, when I'm taking off the iPad, it's vulnerable and I, I lost already one iPad Pro and had to pay the money. So that's the reason why I'm using a case here. You can tell me stupid or not being careful enough or something like this, but it can happen for whatever reason that this drops. So in my opinion, I will still stay here with the Sugo case because it is just still the best form factor. The buttons are really nice clicky when you have it in this case and it is really the same you know there's not much more thickness on there with the leather it feels a lot actually it feels more expensive on the leather than with this surface so i don't know why they're still using this surface it gets so dirty so quickly it was already the case with the apple keyboard folio look at this i mean you can say i should you know, I'm not tidy enough or whatever. However, I'm using this Sugo case for months now and it is barely dirty and you can easily clean it. Here, if you try to clean it, it's, it stays dirty. So I don't know why they choose this material on the outside and especially, and now we come to the price, especially for such a premium price. I mean, $350 at the point I'm doing this video right now. This is, I mean, it's insane. Yeah, so the Sugo case, I don't know, it's around $80 or something. Just compare it, of course, and I get it, I get it. We don't have a functionality, we have no keyboard, things like this. But even looking for the Bridge Pro, for example, where you also get a trackpad and a keyboard, it is half the price of this. Let's see if they can keep up with the functionality and the quality. And you also need external charging and things like this, I totally get this. However, still $350, that's nearly an iPhone SE. Or if you, you, you know, iPad Pro 12 inch and 2020 and the Magic Keyboard in combination, only the base things is $1,350. You can even get a MacBook Pro for $1,299, the base model. Obviously, we don't want to start comparing these two too much. However, if you're considering to get an iPad Pro as a laptop replacement, and then you have all the letting downs that they are not the apps that you can use on the MacBook Pro and things like this, then you really should reconsider if maybe a MacBook Pro wouldn't be more worth it. I, I mean, even look at the MacBook Air, it is $999. So it's a really expensive device. This changes, however, when you're going for the iPad Pro 11 inch. And I think then we have a completely different game here because for the iPad Pro 11 inch, you're paying a lot less. You also have less weight. And I think it's much more a mobile device in this regards that you really have a, this, the sweet spot between iPad mini and the MacBook. You know, it's really, it's really nice to carry around. That's just my personal opinion. And I know many of you love it. They love the Magic Keyboard. It's finally the keyboard they've been always waiting for. Yes, I think the options you had so far for the iPad Pro weren't that good. And we always have in mind the comparison to a MacBook or to a laptop or something like this. And this might be the reason why we think that's so awesome. And obviously it is really nice that you have this design thing. Um, you really see the difference when somebody is sitting there with an iPad Pro now and somebody is sitting there with a normal tablet or with a laptop, they will know, okay, that's the magic keyboard, that's the nice iPad Pro, I get this. It's really nice design. 
However, from the functionality point of view and with the integration of the Apple Pencil, those are the reasons why I will actually send back my Apple keyboard and why I will stay with the Sugo case instead. However, if you are somebody who can use all the apps on the iPad Pro and there's no need to use any desktop apps, and if you're not using the Apple Pencil that often and you rather write on a keyboard and want to have the trackpad, I think that's a really great solution. Obviously, you can live and work from an iPad Pro solely if this is the case. In my case, it's not possible to work everything that I have to do from the iPad Pro. That's the reason why I still need a MacBook Pro and I don't want to mix up devices. So I solely use my iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil for handwriting, note taking and for drawing and my MacBook Pro for all the other heavy work that I have to do. So that's really the things that you need to consider and if it is worth to you. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure that you share it with your friends, whoever is considering buying a Magic Keyboard. I think you really should put these things into perspective. I'm open for discussions in the comments below. Just hop there, let me know your thoughts. I'm looking forward to read from you. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and I'll catch you up next time.